Tailgate Party is one of the best NES games. Not one of the best homebrew games, one of the best NES games. And the average NES game is a pretty mediocre boilerplate action platformer, so I don't think this is an outrageous claim, since Tailgate Party is something completely unique. It was missing from a certain recent, short-lived, controversial top homebrew list, and I said I'd make a video in protest, so here it is. There's a lot of amazing homebrew games that do get at least some attention. The Battle Kid 2s, Blade Busters, and Lizards of the World. Lizard gets some attention, right? Tailgate Party is maybe more overlooked. The only gameplay of it on all of YouTube is from the NES-a-thon 2K16, which has 32 views. Shout out to Player's Guide, how you darn? I guess there's 150,000 views on a certain video of someone pretending to play it, but I'm not gonna count that. It does, though, show up on a certain top 50 NES homebrew list by NES developer Soul Goose Productions, to which I say, rock fucking on! Tailgate Party was made by ORAB Games, who you might know from making Tailgate Party, and I think that's it. It's basically a game similar to Cornhole that uses the power pad. It doesn't have flashy demo scene graphics, level design that goes way beyond what was on NES in the 80s, or represent a feat of programming excellence. What it has is a novel idea that happens to work really, really well. You throw beanbags at a power pad. Who even thinks of that? I don't even know if there's any video game on any platform with this mechanic. There are cornhole arcade games, but they aren't video games. There are cornhole video games, but they don't have the physical cornhole mechanic. It has a very Flappy Bird-esque quality of, oh, I could have made that. Yeah, but you didn't. So Tailgate Party has a variety of games, most of which involve the closest roll of the power pad being worth one point, second row is two points, and the furthest row is three points. There's a single player campaign where you fight your way through a parking lot of a bunch of weirdos who play different games. There's a game where each player tosses four bags and then the player who gets more points gets the difference in between your two scores. Whoever gets to exactly 21 wins. If you go over 21, you bust and you go back to 11. There's a game where you play multiple rounds of four bags and you have to just win a certain number of rounds. There's a game similar to bowling where it's whoever can get the most points in 13 frames. And there's battle bags where if you land on a space on the entire power pad, you claim it. And if your opponent already owned that space, it flips the ownership over to you. After a certain number of rounds of this, the game ends and whoever owns whatever spaces are left is totaled up and that's the score for the game. The single player campaign is pretty lengthy. It would take me at least a couple hours to complete it, if I could complete it. I've never beaten the entire game legit because it's also really, really hard. The computer makes strategic moves, such as intentionally missing if you're going to bust in 21, but also in general, the CPU is just a crack shot bag player. Obviously, this game is better as a multiplayer game, but because the CPU is very challenging, I think the game is still very playable, even if you don't have 20 feet to throw beanbags across your house. And because of the nature of the game, if for whatever reason you needed more difficulty, you could always just back up from the power pad. And I haven't made it clear yet, the physical aspect of this game works really well. You have to hit your target with a bag. Bullshit sliding shots will not count. A shot that almost hits a dot and then kind of flops over onto it usually won't count. But when you actually hit your target, there's no issue. I mean, this has nothing to do with ORAP games, but it's like the power pad was made for this. And my power pad isn't in like pristine condition. Like the rest of you, I just have it crumpled up and shoved in a cube. What else do I even need to say about this game? You get it. It's got a list of achievements you can go for. The developer intentionally doesn't say what the achievements are, so you have to figure out what they are for yourself. It obviously doesn't come with any beanbags, so you have to go buy some cornhole beanbags separately. I would say get heavier ones that weigh a pound or more. One of my bags from Etsy has this slighter, softer filling, and it's just not as good to throw. That one's nice. That one's too light. That just isn't regulation. Are there cons? Yeah, tailgate party's kind of a pain in the ass to set up with enough room to play. Every time you miss a shot, you have to run up to the controller and tell the console that you missed a shot. You also can't skip single player dialogue, and if you've played the game 10 times, that's pretty annoying. 
but it's novel. It's completely new. It's a video game thing I haven't seen before. And I live for indie games like this because obviously something like this is never going to be made by a big developer. Where do you get it? I have no idea. It's sold out on his website. It used to be on eBay a while back. Beg Tim Wordinger for another print run. He seems like a cool guy. But you can also download the full game on Itch.io under a pay what you want model. Link in the description. That's Tailgate Party. You might have seen me call this a top tier NES homebrew, but it's a top tier NES game. And that's why. Thanks for watching.